Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here, Tuesday the 2nd of June. Thanks again for watching. This is your look ahead video uh, and I've been having a bit of a play around today so uh, excuse me while I indulge for a moment. Uh, this is the mean of the 7 to 10 day 500 millibar anomalies. We've got ECMWF on the left here, we've got the GFS on the right. Notice um, similarities between the two. Look, both got a trough out here in the Atlantic bit of uncertainty though over exactly where the trough is and both building heights look through the UK so seeing higher pressure building across the UK during the course of the coming 10 days trough here too across the eastern parts of the states leading to some pretty heavy showers there and also interesting to see this trough out here in the Western Pacific. Now, that leads me on to uh, what I've been taking a look at. And by the way, with that high building in uh, that we can see here on the uh, 500 millimeter anomalies, that's kind of leaning us into next week, the idea of higher pressure building and the idea that it probably stays like that through to about the 12th or the 13th of the month before uh, we see some sort of breakdown into fairly hefty showers. Um, incidentally, I should say Friday looks pretty interesting with the risk of some thunder rain more on that tomorrow and Gary will have more on that in the fast forecast for you as well now uh, sea surface temperatures looking like this at the moment these are the anomalies clearly showing look the developing El Nino through here there's the warmer than average water off the coast here look we've got cooler water west of the UK down to the west of Portugal and down to the central parts of the Atlantic that a classic signal of the negative um, AMO. Uh, warmer conditions over on the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean. This is an interesting pattern as well. Warmer water west of um, South America, uh, west of oh, yeah, off the western coast of South America um, and then this cold water here, warm water mid-Pacific, cold water again here before warm water to the east of Australia. All this leading into a pattern that we can try and identify with previous years. Now, if you go and have a look at the website, weatherweb.net, you'll see on there that I did a posting uh, earlier on today looking at previous moderate El Nino years and what the weather was like during those years and I've been on about those as you know now for a few days but what I did today was just have a little bit of a play around with some numbers and I went with all El Nino years that are similar to this year so I've kind of extended the range of what we were uh, originally looking at and this is the mean of the 500 millibar flow for Junes of those years and what they're doing is they're kind of masking the higher than normal pressure that we've been looking at across the northeast of the country here and they tend to lead more into a westerly flow. Now if you then compare that with the years that run more closely to those uh, to this year then this is what you end up with. You see you, you kind of get a, a, a watered down pattern. You get uh, a pattern which shows um, yeah similarish conditions with low the normal heights look down towards the south of the country coming through here but it accentuates the higher the normal heights up here towards the uh, northeast so I mean that that's the pattern that we're using that's the pattern when you look at all El Nino years similar to this one now if we just go on and, and by the way I should say that actually this is how June looks as if it's going to shape up just at the moment I've got to be honest and say that looks more like an end of June pattern uh, than the beginning part of June. Um, but we'll see how things progress. Uh, that's what we're doing and uh, that's what I've been trying to do over the last few weeks is point out the uh, impact of these El Nino events. So if we then go on and take a look at July. So this is the average for July, putting in all of those numbers. And you notice that what it tends to do is to try to build, look, the heights up towards the north of the country, low the normal heights down towards the south, real screaming jet coming through here across central parts of Europe, making central Europe wetter than normal, but also you notice low the normal heights look in across the south of the UK. So southern parts of the UK, it does hint at staying unsettled if you take all the uh, El Nino years as a whole. And then in August, that's what the pattern does look. In August, it puts a trough through the country, keeps unsettled conditions across the country, higher than normal heights out towards the west here. And the pattern that we get building basically is a ridge through here, 
a high over Scandinavia and then a trough down through the uh, British Isles. But if we then look at the years more, more similar to this year for August, that's what it shows. Look, the trough off towards the south. There's the uh, high west and east. It again, though, keeps that trough across more southern parts of the country. So you can't get away from the idea that although high pressure is kind of meandering around and close by to the country, during these El Nino years, what it tends to lean to is the jet being pushed for the south, troughs being over the country and conditions across the UK tending to be more on the unsettled side. Now, it's an idea that gets developed more in our uh, premium video, which you can go to YouTube and view now. You do have to pay for it, but it's because you're getting the same information that private clients get, and you can go along and have a look at that now. But it's interesting to see how these El Nino patterns are tying in with what we've been predicting. And I have to say, are producing better results at the moment uh, or seem to be producing better results than the uh, longer range models. So I'm going to leave you with that for now, but uh, whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Uh, keep the sun shining and bye for now.